Uh, we got uh, all three people in one shot. It's a historic <laughs> and historic. I go with a uh, historic. Impressive. <laughs> it's an <laughs> impressive. Uh, it's an impressive moment in, in, in What the Flick. Um, uh, and uh, you like the uh, new set? I think it's great. Yeah, look at that. You can make eye <laughs> work. I mean, it's, I like, exactly. thank God we like each other. But as I, I now like to say, it is uh, America's uh, uh, least formal movie right. review show. Right. <laughs> uh, Matt Atchity from uh, Rotten Tomatoes over here. Uh, uh, Jonathan Kim from uh, Rethink Reviews, who'll be on the uh, Young Turks later with the review of. Uh, it's Wasteland. Where you, it's where you jump in, my friend. Wasteland. <laughs> um, all right, two, uh, two films uh, today that we have, uh, Unstoppable and Morning Glory, uh, with uh, Harrison Ford, Unstoppable, Denzel Washington, and there are other people in both the movies. Uh, we'll start with uh, Morning Glory. Uh, Matt, uh, what's going on here? It's, uh, you know, I, I was excited about these, this movie because I spent most, still at this point, most of my career in local news and in news, so it's a... Uh, I actually was excited. Uh, and this is a story about a news producer, a uh, played by Rachel McAdams, who gets a job running the last place morning show in New York mm -hmm. uh, for a fictional network. It's funny because it's almost, it really is the CBS morning show. Right. Well, I'll get to all that in right. a second. But so it's, it's, she's the, running it's the, the worst show. Play. Right. Right. And she's got six or seven weeks to turn the ratings around, and one of her ideas is to, well, not just to turn the ratings around, but one of her ideas to bring new life into the show is to hire the kind of actor that's, or the anchor that's been put out to pasture played by a very grumpy Harrison Ford. Yes. All right, so let's take a look at the clip. Daybreak's understaffed, underfunded. Any producer who works there will be publicly ridiculed, overworked, on the pay. Awful. I'll take it. I'd like to offer you the position of co-host of Daybreak. After the career that I've had. <laughs> Is he going to cook? Is he going to do fashion segments and gossip? Not my thing. You happen to be a pretentious, fatuous idiot. A fatuous idiot who makes three times what you make. So now is an excellent time for you to take up drinking. You want to make the ratings worse? That's why you came here? I'm not giving up. Try not to bore the nation into a coma with your dominance crap. Suck it. Mike! No one can do their jobs around here well because you can't be bothered to do yours at all! And we're back. Welcome back to Daybreak. It's only my job. It's not my whole life, right? You're worse than I am. I was never at home. When I was, I took every phone call, watching TV out of the corner of my eye. Let me tell you how it all turns out. You end up with nothing, which is what I had until you came along. Daybreak's understaffed, underfunded. Any producer. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's a rare movie where the trailer sucks more than the film. <laughs> I mean, that thing at the end, Jesus, I, you guys don't have earpieces in, but it was Harrison Ford with a line that's not in the movie, that sort of uh, moment with Rachel McAdams where he sort of comes clean, where he bears his soul for the first time in the movie. But there's a lot of dialogue uh, there in the, uh, in the trailer that, that wasn't in there, you know, and it's like, you know, I had nothing <laughs> until you came along. Jesus. Oh, God, I, I can't that, even see it. I think that actually is in the movie. I well, the, there was and I remember a, when it came in, I was like, what? There was a bunch of stuff before that. You know, right. I'm watching TV out of the corner of my eye. I take every phone call. They add stuff that obviously got cut out of that right. scene is, is in the trailer. I think you're right that line. Yeah. So anyway, Matt, uh, uh, your thoughts. So let's start off here. You know, this movie, I will start out by saying this movie has a lot of problems. There's a lot of things that it seems to want to set up, and it kind of misses the point on. You know, there's, it's... It, at its core, seems to be about Rachel McAdams' character trying to balance the demands of her professional life and trying to have a personal life. And it yeah. does that Poorly. okay. No, I, I think Poorly. it did that okay. But, you know, she gets in a relationship with Patrick Wilson, which she just jumps right into, which yeah. happens yeah, with no romance. No like, chemistry, we're set right? up to believe that she's so awkward amount around men. He shows interest in her. She doesn't know. She's goofy. Right. And then she essentially just shows up one day and takes her right. clothes off. Right. You know, you Which you was get, awesome. You get what? That was probably <laughs> the best part you, of the you movie. You see her in her panties two, maybe three times, right. which are highlights right. of My the score film. for this movie would have been higher if we saw more of that. I cannot I, use the word you just used. Panties? Oh, come on. <laughs> We're grown You can't back. say fluffy either. Knickers? <laughs> Underwear. Nearly <laughs> naked. A lot of options. <laughs> panties banned from what the flip. Continue. <laughs> so... You know, there's a few other things that I would have liked to have seen more of. You know, there's a great, what I thought was a fun scene where Diane Keaton is the longtime anchor of this yeah. show, and Harrison Ford as the who's got pretty much one note through this whole movie, which is grumpy. 
you know, grumpy as, and whispering, as, if not shouting. Right, as the news anchor who comes in and has to sit through this, you know, has to sit through the morning show. Not right, he is Mr. Gravitas. You know, when they actually finally start fighting on air, I thought that was kind of fun. I so did I, and I thought that was going to be where the movie went. That they finally found something that would work with people. Right. Is that these is they snip at each other. Right, and it and the movie. But then that died. The movie instantly. seems to set up a lot of things that it never really explores. You know, it sets up that. You know that Diane Keaton was a former beauty queen, and she's kind of been doing this for twenty years. And right, but she doesn't and, seem like a former beauty queen. She actually, she's right. Actually, but also, but I right. I, but you don't learn anything like how did she get to where she was. You don't. You know, it, a lot of other movies would have taken the time to really kind of explore some of these other characters. Well, I know this one doesn't. Real but quick, sorry. Go ahead. What worked for me in this movie was that it's Rachel McAdams, and honestly, I think that this is going to be the beginning of a big career for her, and I think that we're going to see her as the next Julia Roberts. Well, I mean, New York Times did an article a while back about how she's a rare star who can do drama and comedy. And, I mean, one thing I remember, actually, from the early trailers of this, I think it, they were going for more for, like, the ensemble sort of thing, where it's the three of them. And then they've switched up to really play up the Devil Wears Prada aspect. It's the same screenwriter and sort yeah. of, like, the young, plucky girl, like, out on her own, trying to make it work. And, I mean... You know, every, everyone is saying that Rachel McAdams is really good in it, and she is she is perky within an inch of your life. It, it's like taking crystal meth and sunshine <laughs> and a can-do attitude and injecting it right into your eyeballs. But she actually, I mean, I think she pulls it off okay. But well, and I think, you know, you make a good point about the ensemble piece. I think that they actually fake you out with the cast, right? You start to think because it's Diane Keaton and because it's Harrison Ford and Patrick Wilson and Jeff Goldblum, you're actually going to get more of an ensemble feel to this movie. Like a broadcast news. And it's, and it's not that way. It's not like that. It's really her story. Well, I feel like that you guys make a good point there that the, there well could have been a different story that wasn't there and this felt to me patched together and patched together incredibly awkwardly. Uh, I felt like this film uh, sprinted uh, to the finish. Like that they didn't, they didn't know what they were doing, they didn't know exactly how to end it or what the theme was or what the idea was. And then you get a lot of characters uh, behaving in ways where they did not behave before. Um, you mentioned Harrison Ford and, and, and you agreed about the one note. It's, it's half a note. Um, he growls, basically. <laughs> he growls, Harrison Ford, that guy, you know, is the newsman, right? So he doesn't do the morning right. stuff, he doesn't do the fluff. But he sucked as a newsman. Nobody would put that guy on TV ever. But I mean, like, I got it. He's a serious wow. guy. But nobody goes on television and talks like this with a snarl. You know, I mean, it is a communicative business. Right. He looked right. like a guy who didn't know how to communicate with people in any way. Uh, right. Even Cronkite seemed to have some life, right? Like, totally had I life. I mean, yeah. you know, you think about your great anchors, and, as, and even as they get towards the end of their careers, right, as Dan Rather and as Cronkite and as Brokaw were hitting the ends of their careers, there was still a real spark to them that you don't see with Harrison These Ford guys were, these, the guys you mentioned, uh, all of them, Peter Jennings, Dan Rather, Tom Brokaw, all those guys, no matter what you think of them, they were broadcasters. Um, and they're, by the way, great cameos from uh, Chris Matthews, uh, right. Morley Schaefer, and, and Bob Schieffer. It was so great to see Bob <laughs> Schieffer in a movie. Um, yeah, I mean, Harrison Ford, he doesn't so much have gravitas as just a low voice. That's really right. all, that's right. really all he does. He's just an old and, and I'm guessing that he was roughly as grumpy doing this movie as the character is. Because he's also, in, in the past, made no bones about, like, I just do this for the money. I just do a movie every once in a while, then I just want to hang out on my right. own. So he can go buy a plane, yeah. right? Well, he... Uh, um, I, you know, I like Harrison Ford, and there was a long period of time uh, during his career where he did not make a bad movie. None. I mean, I think you can start his career, you know, and look from, you know, Force 10 from Navarone right up to through, um, um, you know, like regarding Henry. Right. Where no matter what you thought of these movies, they weren't bad. Right. right. And no, he was putting in solid performances. Putting in solid performances. He was good in a lot of these movies. And then as soon as he did Six Days and Seven Nights, you know, the car was getting wobbly. Um, this felt like a performance that was phoned in. I mean, I'm hesitant to even criticize someone like Harrison Ford. But he was no, go ahead. It was a bad character. It was a terrible, right. terrible character. He didn't have a lot to do with the he character. He didn't have a lot to do with it, and he didn't. Yeah. And also, the movie is incredibly predictable all the way through. Yeah. I think there's maybe one thing that, that I sort of kind of didn't see coming, but everything else I did. And then also, one thing that really annoyed me is that if there's ever a second where you're not understanding what you're seeing or should be thinking or feeling, they, they put in know. an incredibly obvious song. Like, Rachel McAdams is getting dressed, so they play a song called New Shoes. Yeah. There's a part where she's trying to decide if... Where, which meet, like which office they're going to meet in, uh, Diane Keaton's or Harrison Ford's, they play Stuck in the Middle with You. And there's a part where she's falling asleep 
and they play a song called Two Sleepy Heads because yeah. she's sleepy <laughs> in case you're blind. You know, great points. Those are that's uh, I didn't notice that. But I, I noticed that the music felt manipulative. Uh, you know, then the, let me just real quick. I know nobody cares about this, but the news <laughs> stuff was it's weird because it was occasionally horrible and some very few films get the news business correct. They either in general totally mock it. That's essentially, and I got it. We mock it a lot. And when Anna and I are out here, when Anna and Jenk are here, and we play, you know, local news stories, we're, we're mocking. But it's not all idiots, and there's some witty, clever people there. And Rachel McAdams played one, but they just get stuff so wrong that I find it really irritating. And I'm sure it's like when uh, ER docs sit there and watch ER, and they're like, "Oh, Jesus!" <laughs> um, yeah, but some of that stuff I thought actually well, really let me, worked. Let me real quick, me. just five more seconds. Mm. And then some stuff they did get right. Some stuff was oddly correct. Right, like the you know the longtime anchor's attitude toward the morning show. Yes, that has to be dead on. Yeah, right? I suspect you know, and that's true. I mean, to the line when he says, you know. You Cretans are part of the news department. I actually right. thought that was one of the better lines in the movie. I agree. Well, I, I, one of the sad things is that I mean, the, this movie is kind of an endorsement of vapidity. Where I mean, there's a part where Rachel McAdams says to Harrison Ford, like, like there's like the news versus entertainment, and your side lost. Right, you lost. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, so suck it up and be a clown. And Harrison like, Ford's really? transformation, though, is just lacks any credibility whatsoever. Right. I thought at the moment where the show might have been canceled, and she says that to him, that that guy might have thought. I don't want to be the guy who kills this, so I'll make an effort. And then he has the preposterous story with the governor. It's right. Yeah. Well, because also, right. like when you think of Devil Wears Prada, which I actually really liked, and I yeah, think that you know great. you have this great, interesting Meryl Streep character who you're trying to kind of figure out the whole time, but there's not anyone no. to figure out in this movie. No. Like everyone is basically exactly what they seem to be right in the beginning, and pretty much that way till the end. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. I had two. Uh, I want to mention uh, two people because I have I, I, there are two crushes. I have two crushes in this movie. I thought you were saying this room. <laughs> one, uh, please. I have, I have one crush in the room. That would be me. Could it? Who is it? Uh, Tune in next time. Um, uh, I know you Di like guys with beards. Diane Keaton is delightful. She looks great. She does look great. And, you know, and she proved what I didn't mean to disparage before is that there are a lot of beauty queens in, in, in news, and, and some of them are totally smart, you know, and they're not all. It's easy to make fun of. And I worked with Lou Parker, who's dating the mayor here in Los Angeles. Um, she's really smart. That's all there is to it. And she's a beauty queen, too. Um, but I really like Diane Keaton. Um, and uh, I can't... I love Patrick Wilson. I love him. I want him to be in more movies. He's extremely handsome. Very Thank handsome. You. Oh, he's totally... What are you talking about? Doesn't, he doesn't quite do it to me. I don't know what it he's is. He's dreamy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> My friend that I saw the movie you with. You were way too straight. Right. You gotta open yourself up. <laughs> My friend up. that I saw the movie with went nuts over him. Just really? Wants the to girl? See yeah. No, I just, I think he's good and I think he's charming and I think he just nails it. I, I, I like Patrick Wilson. I like it when he's a, I like it when he, with a Sam Jackson movie uh, with the Carrie Washington, you know, with the Sam Jackson's the cop and their neighbors and they, you know. Oh, right, right. Now right. Apparently it's on the tip I, of all our tongues. I was kind oh, of counting on about John. the cop about the end of the, the neighbor yeah, at the end thing. of the street the right. light at the end anyway right. I liked that I like him when he and I liked Watchmen I liked his stuff in Watchmen yeah, I don't think great. I did all right so let's do some grades Matt uh, you know I I my score I've janked up the score mm -hmm. I will admit it largely on the strength of Rachel McAdams who one of my best friends has given me a line that I will always remember when I think of her now she is the rich man's Jennifer Garner. Um, mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's good. I don't. Want, I, I like Jennifer Garner too, but she's Rachel McAdams is no, totally. I think she's great, and yeah. so I think it's worth watching just for her because I think we're going to see a lot more out of her. And I'm giving this one a six. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that she's good too, but it it was a movie that I I felt like I suffered through. I mean, guys, be warned if you if you go to see this, make the deal with your girlfriend or wife that you're going to see faster after this one or something like that. You will have earned something if you go to see this. Yes, movie. but see, secretly you get to see her with no pants. So it kind of makes it worth sitting through. Yeah, but I, I mean, that probably totals 20 seconds in all, I think. So I, I couldn't take my eyes on the scene where she took off her pants. I couldn't take my eyes off Patrick Wilson. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so, uh, all right, so your score. Who kept his pants on? <laughs> he did. Uh, I give it a three. All right, three. Now, I, uh, last night when I saw this, I gave it a, a five. I thought it was average. And, so, and by the way, is there are moments where it's funny. The audience was laughing, especially in the first half before it got ridiculously stupid. Um, and then, as I woke up this morning, I'm like, no, that's crazy. A four and a half. And then during this conversation, I've dropped it to a four. <laughs> if, if this conversation goes on 60 seconds longer, it'll be a three and a half. 
Uh, so it, dropping my score to a four, that's going to make the uh, rating for um, uh, what's the name? Morning Glory. <laughs> uh, not to be confused with the 1933 film with uh, Adolf Manjou and uh, Catherine Hepburn. It's about, a, a, about a train that won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> or the Oasis album. <laughs> um, oh, no, no. That's, uh, the, no, that's Morning Glory. Yeah, no, you got me in. That's right. Um, uh, and uh, Adolf Manjou in that, too. So uh, uh, that brings it to 4.3 uh, for Morning Glory. And it's lower than that. Trust me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but there, there, there was like a 40-ish year old woman sitting next to me who was laughing like crazy and gasped several times as if in surprise. Yeah, well, so I'm not sure, I mean, I don't know if it means that that's who this movie is for or if that woman was just really dumb. Yeah. But I don't think it's um, going to do well, despite the fact that I think that uh, there's a, a, an audience for it. I, I don't think it's going to do well, but I don't know what I'm talking about. 